The second thing we can do is to import the face scan we just did and here you are going to see uh, that a good face scanner provides a perfect alignment of objects between the pre-op state and the face without doing any additional work with just one point placement and you see how green it was when um, aligning these two scans. Now that the face scan is aligned to the pre-op model, we are going to go one um, step further and actually cut the teeth from the face scan because we don't need it anymore since uh, the models just aligned and delete them. And now we are going to have a clear lip curve and underneath you are going to see the pre-op model and uh, the, um, of the maxilla and the mandible. Now that we have both of them, we are going to export the face scan and also we are going to merge this set face scan with the maxillary to have a pre-op state of the maxillary and the face at the same time that is going to also get exported. In this step I remind you that you need to also export the mandibular and the maxillary pre-ops because using them further is only going to be possible if you have everything exported from Medit Design and not from the first scan you had. As I have mentioned in the previous slide, the pre-op states have also, uh, need also to be exported. As you can see here, we uh, just press export to Medit Link for both pre-op, op and also mandible base. This patient needs uh, an implant planning, a waxer for an implant planning. So let's see how we import everything in um, Medit CAD. We, uh, deselect the files proposed by, uh, uh, by MedicCAD and we realign the first the face smile and also the uh, jaw, the pre -op, the jaw and uh, of the maxilla and the antagonist the mandible. We place them on the virtual articulator on the occlusal plane and now you can see we have the as a pre-op we have the smile of the patient, a three-dimensional smile and underneath the op state and we can start working or we have a second way of doing this and let's just see how we reopen a clinic cut and instead of importing the pre-op uh, maxilla we are going to uh, get the face and the pre-op maxilla the, also the maxilla and uh, the antagonist as you can see here, we place them on the occlusal uh, surface and after making sure they are correctly placed, we are going to get one step further and we are going to see that we have the op state here, but also we can benefit from the pre-op that has the teeth that we had before and also the face and here we can start working on this. So the way I do workshops is to actually import um, the pre-op of the patient and I'm going to duplicate it so that I uh, don't work uh, on this uh, to have it as a base of interpreting things. And now I'm going to select every tooth that I need. And after selecting all the teeth, I'm going to go over them once again with a brush tool and make sure that the whole of the tooth is selected, as you can see here. We make sure that nothing is left out, but also that we don't get any part of the fixed gingiva. In uh, this case, sometimes we need to deselect data and sometimes we add data, as you can see here. We make sure that everything is nice and clean. This is going to help us a lot in the next part of filling what we cut, cut out now. We also go on the palatal surfaces, get everything. This is very important to be done right, so get uh, the appropriate amount of time needed to do everything here correctly. After things are almost done now, we have just the last and to work on on the plateau surface and now that we have done this just please orient the model one more time and we are going to delete this data we are going to erase everything and you will 
will see how important it is to actually see um, that everything got out clean. Now we are going to bridge everything together from the tips of the papilla. After we have done this, after we have done this, we are going to close the holes and let the program do its thing. Uh, we never close with color because we want to to make sure that we know where we cut the teeth out because this is going to give us the margin line of the future WhatsApp. And now subtractive, we are just going to remodel the mesial portions of the back teeth. And now we are going to shape the uh, virtual post extractions that we just done. We can do this by uh, using the morph tool and pull down on the model, as you can see here. And after we do this for every socket, we are going to uh, make sure we smooth things out. Never uh, use the tools uh, that we use on the models. Never use them on the gingiva uh, at the sides of the extraction sockets. As you can see here, we uh, try to be as precise as possible. Now we are going to export the cut model we just generated and we are but before this, we are going to uh, duplicate it one more time. And the second cut model that we just got, we are going to pull on the extraction sockets a little more down and um, or use the subtractive tool. And we have going to uh, we are going to have two models, one with the shape of the extraction sockets and one with a, this shape a little bit more pronunciated. Uh, this is very important, so please do both steps. We are just checking if we are uh, we have a little difference between them. Now we are going to export both models. And as you can see, um, we also can uh, rename these models and everything is going to be exported. Every model is going to be exported to Medi from MediDesign to MediLink. Just to explain one more time what we did before. So first we are cutting the teeth out and uh, generating a model with the virtual extraction sites. Because the wax up that we are generating is going to get merged to this model and we are going to use boolean functions to do this boolean merge. This function only uh, uses um, only works well when the two models intersect. So this is why we are going to use uh, the model with deeper pockets we are going to design on that and after we are finished with the data we are going to merge the wax up with a second model with shallower pockets also we are closing the model holes with um, uh, with uh, the lack of color with gray color so that we are going to be able to see where the outline of the teeth started from and where we did uh, the virtual extractions so that we generate teeth with the exact position as uh, the previous extracted teeth at the margin line and from there on out we can uh, replace uh, we can do another geometry of the, the meshes. With these things explained let us just start Medit Clinic Hut and we are going to use uh, the workflow prepared data. We are going to import the, uh, the models from Medit Design, the ones with uh, uh, deeper extraction pockets. And we are going to start placing the margin line. It is very important in this step to actually get the margin line along the gray area of the uh, extraction sockets. As you can see here, please take your time with this step and do it as well as possible because when generating the teeth after placing the proper position of teeth from the Medit library, they are going to get pulled to this margin line that we are just placing now and we want to have this margin line uh, at the emergency of the actual real teeth. So not, uh, this is also why when doing the extract, virtual extraction techniques we need to not modify 
the area that surrounds the gray spots so always take that uh, be careful how you, you manage this data how you subtract and morph it now that the margin line is almost placed we are just going to see how this happens so we go fast we just place it and then pull on the margins at points where they are needed or delete if this also is the case But it is very important, as you can see here, even if it is on fast forward, to get it right and in the correct position. The bridge tool that we used before does not have uh, the ability to trace gray lines. Maybe Medit will help uh, with this in the future. But right now, this is going to be bridges are going to be in the color of the model. And also here, it is very important. In the previous step, it is very important to actually smooth and cut out the generated grey surface from the uh, mesial parts of the teeth in the back. Now, the program is going to uh, first generate an insertion path, uh, and we are going to use a bridge insertion path, a common insertion. Uh, try and get it uh, so that it uh, actually allows the fitment of the of this virtual bridge between the mesial parts of the posterior teeth. Now we are going to place the teeth and we are going to uh, position them uh, as close as the margin line is possible. We are going to scale them and rotate them, scaling by uh, using the shift key and rotating. Uh, do remember to use the shortcuts. It's, it's going to be much easier for you to place because these shortcuts allow rotation and scaling and by pulling on the T's with a left mouse button. We can also in this step use multiple libraries because Medit is integrating more and more libraries at this step and uh, they also have a very nice tutorial on uh, Medit Academy on how we are able to build our own library if needed. As you can see here we use multiple um, viewing points to be able to place our uh, wax up in the correct position. Try and be as thorough as possible and if you can also respect the margin line you are going to have an easier time when uh, in the next step but if not, the teeth are still adjustable. Also in this step, you can see that we are using a grid beneath that is going to, uh, is going to help us uh, with the positioning of the teeth. Um, it would have been much easier to have um, uh, custom uh, view angles, but since we don't do this, we are going to uh, manage the situation, as you can see here, by always um, dragging the model around and changing the view in the axis. Now that we are almost done, we are going to jump in the next step. And in this next step, we are going to use uh, the already placed crowns to modify them. As you can see, uh, after the crowns are, uh, the teeth are placed on the model, uh, when jumping to this step, the program pulls on the crown edges to actually adjust them to the margin line that we just generated uh, in the step before. And now we'll, uh, we are going to uh, need to actually smooth out the error that the program gives when uh, pulling on the margins and uh, building nicer teeth. We are also going to um, add and remove material and morph the teeth in the correct position. Now we can also adjust the shapes and the geometry of the models in a more uh, correct manner. Here we are going to be also able to generate contact points with the antagonist. We are going to be able to modify uh, the suggested library by um, adding grooves to these or um, pulling on the angles as you can see here. Also these are selectable and also deselectable so that we can actually see the teeth we, uh, tooth we are working on without the interference of the crowns uh, that are uh, on both sides of the set tooth and we can do this with every single tooth that we are working on. Take your time and build 
a beautiful outcome here because this is the last step in the Ruaxa procedure uh, that allows modification of, uh, this, uh, of these shapes. As you can see, we have five tools at our disposal. The number one adds material, the second subtracts material, the third smooths the shapes out, fourth is going to uh, be, uh, let you pull on margins in, either, uh, in any direction you need to, and the last one is just recently have been, uh, been introduced, the fifth one, that actually allows to uh, design very, very small details on the surface and actually subtract it. You are going to be able to cut with it um, very small details. Now we are actually nearing the completion of this model and um, also here we can see how the final shapes of this teeth actually tends to get done. Now on the palatal, we are going to go on the palatal surface of this teeth and start building uh, the contacts that we need. If you ha also have a um, dynamic model generated, you can use that as well to generate also dynamic movement of your uh, waxa. And this is done by actually, uh, instead of importing the antagonist as a static object, we uh, import the intersection model um, that the dynamic function generates. If you want to use that, because we can exchange models in a Medic Clinic CAD, I suggest that you actually do a full model of all movements of the patient and import that as your antagonist. We have a little bit more of work to do, but we are getting there. We thicken the surfaces so that we have contacts where we need them to be. Now that everything is done and we have contacts, the next thing will be after checking that uh, we have uh, gotten to the desired outcome to uh, use the distance to antagonist cut. I usually cut them to 0.1, but you can cut uh, these models and the contacts to the antagonist to whatever value you like. So this is just my selected value. You can cut them to zero, to, uh, from 0 to 0 0.2, actually. Now that the crowns have been placed and morphed in the correct position, you can add connectors to this bridge to be uh, used as a single piece. You can also um, use your design without connectors. If you um, assign, if you assign uh, this model, this uh, WhatsApp creation uh, as single crowns and not a bridge, uh, you will uh, not have this um, connector part here. If you have it and you need it, uh, my suggestion to you is to first pull the connectors in a more proper position and after doing this to adjust the connectors by pulling on their points in the second step. Uh, do remember that these connectors, if used as a bridge, need uh, a proper um, uh, surface. So your surface should never get uh, below 9 uh, square millimeters in the front area, in the 11 millimeters in the back. You can see here uh, as we, uh, how we modify these connectors and pull them back. These connectors, if left un, uh, unchanged, are going to modify um, the surfaces between the teeth and uh, in the vi visible part. And this is not advisable because this is going to uh, not give a, a very nice smile design. So we are pulling the connectors back to the palette. When we do this and um, morph the connectors in the new position, do bear in mind that these connectors can also modify the context that you generated. So you should also check this in the last part to not have new contacts. As you can see, we are almost done.
I want to have uh, thicker connectors at the base and thinner at the uh, incisal part. We'll check them from every angle. And when we are done and press complete, they are going to get merged uh, in the final design. So this is the outcome of our workshop, as you can see here. In the next webinar, we are going to learn how to use this workshop to build other models and how we are going to use this workshop also in the scanning up to measure our uh, thicknesses and uh, the needed preparations. We can also use this workshop to um, maintain the, prop the old contacts that we had before in the pre-op or also we can um, use it um, as an additive or subtractive workshop. So there are many ways to go from this point on. So we are going to see each other in the next webinar and explain everything. Have a great day. Thank you.